Good afternoon, everybody. My name is Daisy Daniel. I'm a personal resilience life coach coming to you every Monday and Thursday with a live. I'm trying out a new little light here. Couldn't see the time, couldn't see if I was live, but it looks like I am. Happy to be here with you all. I am going to talk a little louder because it is so windy. If you live in Florida, this is like the perfect day to get your surfboard and go surfing. It is so windy and it might interfere with uh, my reflection today, but anyway, here we are. There are lots of people in the building and I didn't want to go inside the building and, and do this uh, because I don't want to get COVID. So we're going to do this outdoors and I'm going to speak a little louder. I'm going to do a reflection from the book, The Language of Letting Go. Today, the topic is really good. It's about getting your needs met, your needs. All right, so let's see what she says about that. I am going to be reading from page 136. Here we go. I want to change careers. I need a friend. I'm ready to be in a relationship. Regularly, we become aware of new needs. We may need to change our behavior with our children. We may need a new couch, love and nurturing, a dollar or help. Do not be afraid to recognize a want or a need. The birth of a want or need, the temporary frustration from acknowledging a need before it's met and the start of the cycle of receiving what we want. We follow this by letting go then receiving that which we want and need. Identifying our need is preparation for good things to come. Acknowledging our needs means we are being prepared and drawn to that which will meet them. We can have faith to stand in that place in between. All right, this one's a short reflection today. I'm gonna to go ahead and read her prayer. She says, today I will let go of my belief that my needs never get met. I will acknowledge my wants and needs, then turn them over to my higher power. My higher power cares sometimes about the silliest little things, if I do. My wants and needs are not an accident. God created me and all my desires. Okay. So that was the reflection today on page 136, entitled Getting Needs Met. All right, so maybe you were brought up hearing this. Um, there's a difference between needs and wants. And needs, you should be happy with having your needs met. If you have your needs met, you shouldn't want anything. Have any of you had that belief system or have those around you? try to inculcate that belief system into you that somehow needs are good and acceptable but wants are you know you're being selfish you shouldn't want things you know uh, you should just be happy the way you are with what you have and not desire more all right we're going to talk about that so let's start at the beginning here she gave a few examples of needs I want to change careers. I need a friend. I'm ready to be in a relationship. There will come a time when you realize you have certain needs and it's okay to have needs. It's okay to have wants. They're both good. God says in his word that every good and perfect gift comes from above. Gifts are normally wants, right? Uh, if your child wants a gift, a birthday gift, or, or, or there's a certain gift you want, it's a want. It's not always a need. Don't you just hate those gifts that are actually gifts for needs? You know, it's like when it's your birthday and your spouse gets you an iron or a skillet. You know, it's nice, but it's not really what you wanted. It, it, that's more of a need that would eventually get purchased. But you have a want. You rather have a certain perfume you like or I don't know. Uh, I always wanted to ride a jet ski. That was always something I wanted to do. Finally got to do it a few years ago. Uh, I always wanted to go on a cruise. I know that's a high ticket item. But, you know, normally those are wants, not needs. 
but guess what? Wants are important too. Don't let anyone make you feel bad about having wants. So let's go ahead and look at what else she says here. Regularly, we become aware of new needs. New needs. We may need to change our behavior with our children. We may need a new couch, love and nurturing, a dollar or help. So here she gives a whole slew of scenarios of needs that you might realize you have, and they're gonna change. They're gonna change in time. Do not, do not be afraid to recognize a want or a need. To recognize it means to put attention on it. To say, hey, I need this. In a relationship, I need you to... Woo! so good. I'm getting tempted to go to the beach to see the waves, what they look like. Just might do that. Okay. Do not be afraid to recognize a want or a need. That's part of loving yourself. Part of respecting yourself actually is to acknowledge the needs and the wants that you have. And not to think that having wants is selfish. I know that was drilled into my head, you know, uh, for many years, many, 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 many years. Things I wanted, I would be told that, you know, that's selfish. I'm not satisfied. I'm not happy with what I have. I should learn to be happy, be content. That verse in the Bible where it talks about contentment. Uh, that was, you know, brought out to me many times by people. And, you know, it took me a long time to realize that needs and wants are important to God. That your needs and your wants are important to God. He, he knows what they are. He realizes what they are. And guess what? He meets them. He does. And if he doesn't, it's because it's not in your best interest to have it at this time. Or possibly never. The birth of a want or need, the temporary frustration from acknowledging a need before it's met, is the start of the cycle of receiving what we want. Okay, so what she's saying is, you're going to recognize a want or need. Then there's going to be a time of frustration where you acknowledge the need before it's met. So from point A to point e, B. From point A, you acknowledge the need you have or the want. And then point B, you actually get it met. That time in between is going to be frustrating. Follow this by letting go, letting go, trusting that you're going to get your needs and your wants met. You let it go, you let God handle it. And then receiving that which we want and need. So the process is we realize what we want and need. We know we're going to get it. In God's time, we're going to let go of the expectations. We're going to trust that it's going to come. And then embrace it when it does come. Identifying our needs is preparation for good, for good, for good things to come. Identifying our needs is preparation for good things to come. All right, so you have to acknowledge it first. Don't push those thoughts away. Don't say, oh, no, I don't need that, you know. I really don't need that. Don't push it away. You really want it. You really need it. So think about it, process it, then let it go, and then just receive it when it comes, because it will come. Don't fret about it. Acknowledging our needs means we are being prepared and drawn to that which will meet them. We can have faith to stand in that place in between. So in, in between A and B, A is your want and your need, B is your finally get it. In there, you're going to let go and you're going to trust, which is very hard for codependents to do, that your need is going to be met. And have faith as you stand in that middle place. Have faith. Remember, faith, hope, and love. Hope that things are going to get better in your life and faith that God's going to do it, and love throughout the process from A to B. And here's her prayer. Today I will let go of my belief that my needs never get met. I bet if you stop and you think of the many things you need and want, how many of them God has answered already. Write them down. You'll be shocked. I know there were so many prayers that I prayed, specific schools I wanted to work at to be with my child. Uh, 
different things, so many prayers that God has answered. And in the end, it was kind of like, you see, I answered this prayer, but it really isn't what you wanted, was it? And I realized, no, it wasn't. But he actually allowed me to, to go through the process, answering those prayers, letting me experience everything, and then realize, no, that really wasn't what I wanted. But many times, it was what I wanted. And it took faith and dedication and continual prayer about it over and over again. So don't say your needs never get met, because that's just not true. I will acknowledge my wants and needs, then turn them over to my higher power. So write them down, your wants and your needs. You could even do two lists if you want. If you want to really be that picky about it and separate your wants from your needs, you know what? God cares about both because he cares about you as a human being. So he cares about your wants. And those that love you should care about your wants as well, not just your needs. What are needs? Food, shelter, clothes. That is like the base, very base, the very bottom. Don't stay there. You have to continue to grow and there are other things that you're going to want to come into your life. My higher power cares. I love that. If you're around people who don't care, <laughs> they just flat out don't care about what you're doing, what you stand for, what you represent, what uh, your passions, uh, who you are, your gifts. They just don't care. But guess what? God does care. Sometimes about the silliest little things. You know, that's so true. That's what she wrote here. They're not silly, but they're so small that we never thought for a minute that God would even acknowledge them. And then we're blown away when he actually answers and does little things. I call them God's I love yous. And I have a whole uh, notes on my phone of the many times many many times that God has done that he has shown me his love through his little God I love you's those are little instances of things that are so insignificant but yet I prayed for them and God answered them it's amazing my wants and needs are not an accident God created me and all my desires yeah we are we are made to think many times you know, in Christianity, in the church, that our desires are sinful. We're born sinful, yes, true. Uh, we are sinners, um, partly true, yes, but we are also forgiven and saved. And uh, our flesh is just, just wants things, things. We're selfish, we're selfish. Listen, if that's the message you're hearing constantly, you need to change the record. You need to change who you're hearing and the people that you are letting influence you and who you are exposing yourself to constantly that you're hearing a message of getting beat down, beat down, beat down. That's the last thing we all need, you know. We, we have many issues and problems we go through in this life and we don't also need the church and Christian leaders to be making us feel like we're insignificant and selfish and the list goes on and on we know when we sin we know what's wrong we read the bible we need encouragement we need encouragement uh then here yeah god created me and all my desires and so you know now if your desires are bad because you want to do something that's contrary to god that's a whole different story you know I don't think God allows that. I don't think he goes against his word that way. But I do believe we're very valuable and God values us. And our wants and needs are important to God. And that's why he answers our prayers. And we should not be ashamed of our wants and needs. I have wants and I have needs. And God knows about them because I pray to him all the time and I share those with him. Be around people who care about your wants and needs. If you don't have a person like that, seek one out, a therapist, a life coach, a friend, a family member you could trust. All right? Anybody out there, anybody want to 
Leave any comments about this topic today, getting our needs met. I did a video a few months ago on Maslow's hierarchy of needs. And it's actually under my abuse playlist on YouTube. It's also on my website. And I entitled it, Something is Wrong, But You Don't Know What It Is. And I talk there in depth about basic needs and how many times people who are abusive will provide you with the basic needs. They'll provide you with food and shelter and clothes. But if you remember that triangle of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, the basic needs are on the bottom, but then it keeps going. And you have many other needs besides food, shelter, and water, okay? So you might wanna hear that. I'll probably put it in the show notes once I upload this to YouTube, so you could have a direct link to that one. All right, enjoy this beautiful windy day. And remember your needs and wants are very valuable and important. Don't underestimate your wants and don't feel guilty for having wants and needs. And most importantly, reach out for help. If uh, there's something you need that you cannot get on your own, reach out because there are many ways to get your needs and wants met. And it's not always with money, okay? All right. Woo! Love this. Beautiful day. God bless you all. Have a good one. Bye.